She for a Story by Anne Egan Read by Catherine Murphy My name is Eleanor Bracken. I'm an archaeologist. Three days to write up a report that normally would take three weeks. <laughs> Some hope. Eleanor, I can hold the blade for 40 minutes, no more. Michael, my ex, phoned me. I'll be there, hold it. With that, I loaded my specially adapted trolley case and four plastic containers into the back of my Berlingo. I was with him in a blink. Michael and his workmen stood by the bulldozer on the bog of Allen. Beneath the poised blade, I saw the most beautiful sight an archaeologist only dreams of. The outline of a large, bulging satchel. You never lift that into your workshop, Ellie. I'll follow you. No thanks, Michael. My wheelie invention here would transport a stuffed elephant. You should go on Dragon's Den with that, the workman smiled. Michael slammed the door. If you think you can manage, I'm off so. Going to Wales for a machinery auction over the weekend. I drove back to my cottage in the Red Hills with my precious cargo. The furs blazed pure gold. Hooray! I shouted to the creamy clouds streaked in scarlet banners. I have the find of the century. It is mine, all mine. Well, for the weekend anyway. I was not going to bring it up to the museum until Monday. Break protocol. But who was to know? I was going to claim this beauty. No one else. No superior would rob me of my place in the sun. This time. By midnight, I knew my find was even more valuable than I first judged. Like a mother with a newborn infant, I gently opened the flap of the satchel. Inside, nice and moist but not wet, all wrapped up in several layers of leather, then wool, finely linen, was a magnificent manuscript. Late tenth century, I reckoned. I practically drooled over it. Without realising, I began to sing a lullaby. I checked moisture content, temperature, light power, special infrared bulbs. I had bog water in the containers. A good firm sod of bog had been its preserver for over a thousand years. Dring, dring! I almost jumped out of my skin. The phone! Yes? Yes? Who is it? There was no sound. Wrong number, I thought. But the spell was broken. I actually slept on the workshop floor in a sleeping bag that night. I was loath to leave my ancient infant. I worked throughout Friday. The Gospel of St John, I was cataloguing and photographing page by page. Work so delicate. Butterflies' wings came to mind. I knew I had the mythical Book of Allen. But a myth no more, a fact. I took notes, wearing special gloves. I constantly checked moisture content and temperature. I was a good mother. Oh, that's all you care about. You're all caught up in your work. You'd have to be some sort of dried out specimen to hold your interest. Old words filled the silence. Silence. rat a tat so loudly on the door. My house is very isolated. Who was that? I locked the workshop door, peered out, my heart thumping. Good night. Hey, is this Eleanor Brackens? A man's voice called. Who are you? I asked, quaking badly. I'm from the Leinster Leader. I don't mean to frighten you. We heard you have the Bog of Allen treasure trove. A golden cup, loads of golden coins, just what Kildare needs. Better even than the Derry Flan chalice. No! No, no, not at all. Nothing like that. It's, it's just some old bog butter, that's all. I had some job getting rid of him, promising an interview and photos on Monday. Only when he finally left did I ask myself, who told him? Michael? Back to work. The joy. Worry too, but I wasn't going to let anything deter me from my cataloguing. Baby, baby, all caught up in yourself. <laughs> I thought I heard a mocking voice. I must pull myself together. I made black coffee and continued my examination. 
I fell fast asleep on the floor beside the precious baby, my right hand outstretched towards the moist sod. Saturday dawned bright and shiny. A shower, toasted cheese, sandwich, pot of tea, and I set to work. With my tiny platinum scalpel, I carefully turned over the last six pages of the manuscript. Now, what a surprise. I read the heading, Schieffer's story. The margins were richly decorated in beautiful scrolls, forget-me-nots, all twined about. I began to read. My name is Killian. I am the scribe of Alan. My work is all done in John's Gospel. I will tell you Schieffer's story in these spare six pages. Schieffer, my assistant, my friend, gifted artist, once heiress to the kingdom of Leakslip. Pahal was king of Leakslip in 973. Recently widowed, he had one heir, his grown-up daughter, Schieffer. She was well-educated but willful. She knew some Latin and some Norse. One day, Cahal sent for her. Your time to marry has come, Shifra. We've hard, hard times from the Norsemen. They sail up the Liffey with ease. They pillage and burn. They tear down houses. The monks have rebuilt often. But now I have found a way to stop all this. You are to marry Hakon. Shifra quivered. Her beautiful face paled. Shadows darkened her luminous brown eyes. For days now, Norse chief Hakon had been meeting her father. In seven days' time, you will marry Hakon. We will make peace with those Vikings, and it will be through your marriage. Months later, I found a way to give Shifra a present. I said to her, Shifra, our beautiful manuscript, which we have finished together, will never have an equal. So much is due to you. I have six empty pages of vellum at the end, so I'm going to write down your story as you tell it to me. You will decorate this little book within a book with all your beautiful drawings and colours. You will never be forgotten. Schieffer's story will be remembered in the book of Alan. This was like finding a twin for an adored child. I read and worked, fascinated, absolutely absorbed, a white truck drew up in my yard. We're from Network 5. We hear you have the Curra Chalice. Can you confirm the value? Half a million? Two million? Stand there in the light for a picture? Bring out the chalice. Close up. Let's start. Some background information on yourself? I've had it up to here, I texted Michael, when at last I got rid of them, with the old bog butter story, gone to the museum. Can I go to your house with X to finish my work? I'll be gone by 7am on Monday. Make yourself at home, came back at once. It was dark as I drove off the curra, except for pinpricks of navy stars in the sky. The furze bushes were like old, shawled women gathering for a secret chat, clutching at one another. I drove on to the farmhouse in Rathbride, pitch dark. Rover barked but recognised me, curling his tail about my leg. A security light came on. I jumped. Be sensible. Be brave, I exhorted myself. Look what she for faced in Clane when the Vikings sailed up river hunting her. Then she survived a night in Pollardstown Fen. Pull yourself together. I picked up the key from beneath the stone, which we'd laughingly called our Rock of Gibraltar. Soon I was in the well-remembered kitchen, warm and cosy, exactly as I had left it last year. I glanced at the photographs. <laughs> Michael had not replaced me yet, anyway, it seemed. I set up once more. The old thatched house was just perfect for temperature and moisture management. I carefully moistened the edges of the turf with bog water. Then, from the very generous larder, I prepared a tasty omelette of ham, cheese and mushrooms, a large pot of coffee, and I was away with the kindly Brother Killian and the willful Schieffer and that art treasure of red of rowanberry, blue of bluebell and forget-me-not, yellow of saffron, scrolls and curlicues and the delightful St. Bridget crosses. How Shifra must have found peace here after her father's ultimatum. Marry the Viking or else! Noises. Noises coming from the barn. Then footsteps around the back of the house. My phone rang. Heavy breathing. 
I let it fall in a bucket of the bog water. Who could know I was here? That workman? No, no. What could I do? My heart hammered in my chest. My breath grew short. I was going to collapse. The steps continued. Began. Began. Remember, Shifra and Clane. Make a plan. My Berlingo was parked at the front door. Two sprints and I would be in. Away. Instant locking system. Away. Flee. Safety. But I could not do it. I could not leave my beautiful babies behind me. My babies. Eleven hundred years old. I was taking them with me or... I was not abandoning them. Be Shifra. Be Shifra, I whispered. Shifra, finding her way to Pollardstown Fen, the terrors of the night about her. I grew calm. I repacked the manuscript in its layers, waterproofed, placed it in my wheelie case. I held my van keys on the ready. My scalpel was in my left pocket. Rover was fast asleep in his basket by the range. Silence. I crept to the door. The words never creaked. I would have about twenty seconds. Place wheelie case in the back. Slam door. Jump into driver's seat. Insert key. Start engine. Leave in darkness. Immediately. Thor. Thor. I counted the never-ending footsteps that circled the house like a Viking performing a pagan war ritual. Now! I grabbed the handle. Pulled the wheelie case. I counted one to eighteen. I must hold my nerve. As I drove from the yard, a man raced towards me. I pressed down on the accelerator. My elbow accidentally hit the light switch. There, in full glare before me, was Michael. Michael! Arms outstretched. I swerved. The Berlingo careered out of the yard. I never stopped until I reached Kildare Garda station. Help us, help us, I babbled. Afford us sanctuary.